Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Josh and I am the proud owner of a 79 Corvette. Don't let the finger distract you. I had a bit of an accident. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> but uh but it wasn't anything bad as just it looks worse than what it actually is but don't let it distract you anyways moving on to the car i was browsing around youtube a couple of days ago and i noticed a couple of youtubers reviewing their c4 c5 c6 you know c8 corvettes and reviewing all these easter eggs and features and weird quirks that the car had and i figured hmm i want to see how many features and easter eggs does this car have to be honest with you guys there's just not a lot <laughs> But I did find a couple of interesting quirks and features about this car that I want to share with you guys. If you guys are interested in watching this video, please stay tuned. If not, feel free to browse on all my other videos, like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next one. All right, guys, to start off this conversation, I think the first thing that I want to talk about is the key situation with this car. And yes, I have my little Harry Potter with me today strange situation with this is that this car came with two separate keys one that you would use to turn the car engine only and one that would use the glove compartment and the passenger and the driver's doors only which is very strange because you don't see that anymore and the funny thing is that they were not even labeled it was just one for the engine and one for the door handles and the glove compartment out of all things which was very strange uh, I've never understood the situation, but if you lose one of them, you're pretty much stuck without being able to either open the car or drive the car. It's a very strange situation, and uh, it's just funny to have two keys. Now, I do have a third one, and this is pretty much to unlock and lock the T-tops from the car. It is necessary as the T-tops do get stolen a lot, but that's the third key for it. One of the weird features about this car is that you can actually turn the car off, turn the lights off, while keeping the headlights or the pop-up headlights open so you are able to either remove the casing remove the bulbs replace them clean them do maintenance whatever you the simple way to do that is by actually pulling on this lever right here this lever acts as an actuator and it cuts the headlights from popping down once you turn the car off so as you can tell my headlights are off this would be on these are off in order for you to use this all you have to do is pull down on the lever and your headlights will stay up while the car is off. This has to be done when the car is on, and that way the headlights are uh, open, on position open. Otherwise, if you wanted to close them, all you have to do is press this down, and your headlights will go down once again. Another interesting quirk that I found about this car, or feature if you will, is that this car, even though it had a lack of features and uh, cup holders, <laughs> it did have, a dome light and that is a very interesting thing the dome light is located right over here and when you turn the car on let me demonstrate the dome light would automatically turn on and mine actually happens to work just fine as you guys can tell now the dome light doesn't really shine a lot and it doesn't brighten the place a lot or the, the gauges a lot but it does make for a nice little accent light and it's weird that a car that's four years old thought about having dome lights and didn't think about having cup holders as you guys can tell, I'm, I'm pretty disappointed about this car not having cup holders. But the dome light is a nice little uh, touch. It makes the car a little bit just a little bit shinier at night and it makes it look nice. You can also change the bulb on the dome light to have something brighter or something dimmer. But you would have to remove the two screws and remove the casing for the dome light. It's not the easiest process, but it's not difficult. I think it's just mostly time consuming. Another weird quirk about the dash is the fact that the gears are actually numbered one, two, three neutral reverse and parking i don't know if you guys can tell but there's something missing can you guys guess what's missing over here is the fact that it doesn't have a drive mode which means that it will it doesn't have the one two three and then the drive in the middle neutral reverse and park like any other car and i'm not sure the reasoning behind this i couldn't find it anywhere i just know that a lot of gm cars of this era had the same exact setup so what that means is that your third gear is also your drive mode uh, which is very interesting to me and it did take me a little bit to get used to it but after a couple of days of driving the car you kind of just forget about it and you just figure that third is also drive but for those unexperienced drivers or those first time drivers just so you know third would be your driving gear as well i think that's really cool about this car is that the battery is actually positioned behind the driver and i think this was a very forward thinking for chevrolet and i read on a couple of forums that it was mostly due to weight distribution but the battery is positioned on the back of the driver's side and I think it's really cool to have the battery in the back of your car. 
it's easy access you don't have to open the large hood and you can just do things easily on the battery one thing that is really interesting to me is where the jack location is positioned it's almost like gm just didn't want you to see the jack or didn't want you to find it in case of emergencies but they did leave a couple of notes or hints for to let you know where the jack is at i will attempt to show you where it is first you put the chair down then you open your third compartment to the right so pretty much the one that's behind the passenger then there's your notes on the jack which no one ever reads you have to remove this little basket and casing, which I will attempt to do now, and you'll be able to see your jack in all its glory. Now it's interesting because this jack is four years old and I don't dare to use it. I'm sure it still works, but I just simply don't dare to use it. Another interesting thing about this jack is that if you lose it, you'll be paying upwards of $400 for an original one. So make sure you don't lose your jack. This car has a spare tire on the back of the car, under the car. What's interesting about this particular spare tire situation is that it has a accent light or a convenience light, if you will, to see where the tire is at. And ironically, mine actually works. <laughs> I didn't even have to change the bulb. It just started working out of nowhere. But it's interesting to note that I think I don't know how common it was for people to get flat tires uh, in, you know, in 40 years ago. But the fact that there was a light, a convenience light for you to be able to look at what you were doing when unscrewing the under tire was very, very good thinking. This is the spare tire in all its glory. And here is the convenience light. And it was right next to the mounting to get the tire out. So it was a very interesting Kind of set up there and the light actually works well it's very bright right now so you can't really see it but mine happens to be working which i'm very happy about and i've actually removed the tire i have another video on that if you guys want to click and watch that video removing the tire and repainting the casing for the tire as well but it was very interesting to see that there was a dome light or a courtesy light to remove the tire i think one of the most important questions anyone has ever asked is this car considered a stingray or is it not and the reason for that is because this car doesn't come with the stingray name to it so a lot of people will tell you that this car is not classified as a stingray a lot of people will tell you that it's the same body it's the same car and for those reasons it is considered a stingray if you want my personal opinion i don't think it's a stingray uh, i think that corvette or chevy decided to cut costs on adding the stingray name to it and remove it and for those reasons, the cars coming forward after the, the Stingray Corvette uh, didn't have that Stingray uh, batch to it. Another reason, and I think I believe this reason for the most part, is that the original designer, Bill Mitchell, who designed the concept car, the Mako Shark for this Corvette, so pretty much the one that designed the lines for this car, retired on early 77. And ironically, after 77, the cars came without the batch of the Stingray which means that it could be the fact that Chevy wanted to honor his retirement by removing the Stingray insignia or emblem to the up and coming Chevys or the Corvettes for that matter, or simply the fact that they wanted to honor the fact that he retired and they didn't want to add the batch to up and coming newer models with different designs to it. Uh, so for those reasons, I don't believe that this is a full on Stingray. I have seen a couple of people changing the Corvette emblem to the Stingray emblem and it doesn't bother me. I just simply don't think that that's the way to do it. That's just my personal opinion. You guys let me know what you guys think. I think one of the most important features or quirks of this car is the trim tag. And if your car doesn't have this, then you should definitely be questioning yourself on whether this car is a good purchase or not. But the trim tag essentially tells you the trim of the car, the paint of the car, and the interior paint of the car. It's a very nice little quirk of this car and pretty much every Corvette owner that has this trim tag, you know, just gives you a little bit more of prideness that you have an original piece of history and not something that's been tweaked on by a ton of different people. It also tells you whether the car has been painted multiple times, whether the paint is the same color, whether the paint matches the interior and the interior matches the exterior and what kind of trim this car was, whether it had leather seats such as this one or it had your combination of leather and upholstery seats. So that gives you a perfect idea of what the car is built like. And if it doesn't have the, the tag, again, you should definitely be asking questions on the car. Guys, thank you so much for watching. If you guys have any questions or comments, please let me know as I am very interested in finding out your thoughts on the Easter eggs or 
quirks and features that this car has or lack thereof. And if you guys have any other things that you guys want to point out or things that I didn't mention that might be of interest, please let me know and I could add them in a separate video. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for my other videos and I hope to see you guys in the next one. Bye.